What's going on guys? Welcome back to your brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and today we're going to be talking about all the technology. Well, not all of them, okay? Not all of them, but the basic technology that we're going to be using for this application. And yes, this is for the new series of the Twitter clone, all right? I still need a name, guys. You still haven't given me a name to call this application because I do not want to get into trouble, legal trouble saying Twitter clone or anything like that, right? So... I don't want to name my application Twitter or Twitter clone, nothing to have with Twitter. So I need to rename it to something else. I don't know. Please leave, leave lists or ideas down below. Um, so that way we could just, you know, it's a group thing, man. Group activity, you know? No. Okay. Anyways, so the React, I mean, we're going to be using some technologies and these are our basic ones, right? So for our front end, it's going to be uh, just strictly React, right? Um, we might have some... Uh, smaller technologies or just other technologies that we're using like Axios, but we're not going to get into that right now, but react and guys, by the way, I highly advise you guys to actually build this out with the tech that you want to build it out with, right? The concept of what I'm going to be talking about, how to build this out is going to be the exact same. So the concept is the same. You just need to use the technologies that you would like. So instead of react, maybe you're an angular guy. So use angular. If you're a view guy, use Vue. If you're a server templating guy, use next.js or pug, whatever you want, right? Just use whatever you want makes you feel more comfortable. Like I said, it's going to be, the concepts are going to be the same. So you could just take it and just do it with any other um, tech that you want to use. But since I haven't talked about Vue or anything like that, I'm doing this video based on the technologies that I've talked about and actually went over on this channel so far. So, Yes, I'm using React, okay? So React is going to be our front end. For our um, server, we're actually using MongoDB to store all of the posts, you know, the tweets and all that stuff. Express Node.js that comes already in package. Passport.js to actually for authentication. And yes, yes, we're going to be, I think someone uh, wanted to do this. We're going to be doing the Google authentication, all right? And by the way, guys, uh, once you learn a Google or any strategy, um, that's basically all the strategies. All right. So you, we're going to do Google and you'll see what I'm talking about. Once we do Google strategy, you could do it with Twitter. You could do it with Facebook. You could do it with GitHub. It's all this It's literally the same thing. You should need to grab credentials for those things. And we're going to be using Redis for caching. All right. Um, caching some of, so we're going to be using Redis for session storage, first of all. And we're also going to be using Redis for caching tweets. All right. So this is my take on how I think I'm pretty sure I'm not too sure. man. I haven't looked in Twitter's um, infrastructure or anything like that. But how I think this is going to be working for us for, for tweets anyways is that let's say that a highly valued tweet uh, user in Twitter posts something. Right. So someone very famous or something like that tweets something. Right. Obviously, millions of people is going to, are going to want to uh, use or see that tweet, right? So instead of making endless requests to the uh, database, which could be costly, by the way, what we want to do is actually cache that tweet. So that way we could get that response way faster and we don't have to keep on querying the database for that same tweet. We already know that that famous person gets, I don't know, 1 million views per day on that tweet, right? I have no idea. Like I said, I'm not even, I don't even go to Twitter that much, but let's say he gets 1 million views for me. That's a lot. So I don't want a million queries going to the database. What I want is just Redis, the caching service, just to have that already stored. And then once they start requesting that, they'll just spit it out. Right. It's going to be a really fast request. Um, instead of just re requesting all the way to the database. Right. So that's where we're using Redis for our sessions and to actually store high valued tweets. All right. And by the way, guys, I'm pretty sure uh, Twitter like has data points, you know, um, to see what is a high value tweet, but we don't have those data points. So you can make this up however you want. Uh, <laughs> I'm honestly, I don't know how I'm going to implement that like high value, but I'm just saying that, hey, I'm going to put myself as a high value uh, um, user. So. Anything that I write is going to be cached automatically. Probably probably everything that you write is not going to be cached because that's not how I set it up, right? It's everything that I write is going to be cached. But like I said, you could set it up 
the way you want to. This is kind of a, since we don't have any data points, we can't really say what's of a high value, what's not, right? Anyways, yes, that's for the server side. And then now for our third parties, which is going to be AWS, uh, we're going to be using the bucket so that way we can store images, right? So some tweets have images and we need to, we need a way to store that. Yes, we could store it in MongoDB, but bro, it gets extremely expensive storing images. All right. So what's going to happen here is that once an image comes in from react, we want to, um, I'm not going to go into details right now, but all we want to do is from the server side, reach out to the bucket, store the image in the bucket, and the bucket is going to return a URL, and that URL is going to be saved in the Mongo alongside with that tweet, right? So that way, every time we request that tweet, we're going to grab that tweet plus the image of that URL, so that way we could use it instead of actually having that binary uh, data. Like I said, images get very expensive, especially if you're doing high-res images. Yeah, they get extremely expensive if you're doing with MongoDB, which is a bad, bad use case. All right. So anyways, yeah, so this is our tech. And by the way, guys, Mongo, you can switch it out for Postgres, My MySQL. Matter of fact, I was actually thinking about doing this with MySQL or not MySQL, Postgres, um, a SQL database. But since I haven't talked about SQL databases as much, I didn't feel comfortable you know, telling you guys, hey, we're going to be using SQL. Try to keep up with me, right? Since we we since we've been over MongoDB and all of its not all of it, but most of its uh, features, we I could I comfortably could actually uh, build this out with Mongo with MongoDB and actually explain some some minor things to you guys, not the whole thing, you know, since you already know MongoDB, right? But in this use case for React, I mean for React for the Twitter clone, yeah, you would want to use like in my opinion, you would, this is a perfect example for a SQL database, right? Cause every tweet is relational, right? You're going to have followers, followees. You're going to have comments inside of Twitter or comments inside of those tweets. Um, yeah. So it's a lot of relationships, uh, with everything going around. But since, like I said, we could still do relationship with MongoDB. It's just a little bit more frustrating, but, um, yeah, we're going to be doing it. And plus, I don't think there's not there's not that many uh, videos out there that that show you how you could do relational. You could do relational uh, relations with MongoDB. And I guess that's a good opportunity for me. Uh, so that's why we're doing it with Mongo as well. But like I said, switch react with whatever you want. Honestly, guys, make it make this project your own. The concepts are the same. Switch MongoDB with a SQL if you want or if you want to use another uh, database, Cassandra, whatever, use whatever you feel uh, comfortable. If you want to use a AWS, uh, DynamoDB is exactly the same. It's a uh, NoSQL database. You could use that instead of MongoDB, uh, you know, but anyways, yeah, guys, these are the technologies that we've talked about aside from the AWS bucket, but these are the texts that we're, we talked about, and these are the texts that we're going to be using in this video. So I hope you enjoy it, guys. This is just an intro on all the texts that we're going to be using, and I hope you actually enjoy this series because in this series, guys, there's something that I'm going to learn some stuff from this series as well. Uh, like I said, I've never built a Twitter clone before. Um, so we're going to be learning quite a bit from this series and more than that, you're going to actually come out knowing way more with all, with just this one series and all the series that I've done. All right. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this intro video to the Twitter, Twitter clone. Please, uh, leave a comment on another name cause we need to use that. So yeah. Thank you guys for doing that or uh, watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I think this video was a bit too long, but I just wanted to get that out there. All right. Um, and subscribe if you haven't comment down below and like the video. If you like the series or you're, you're very excited about this new series and you actually, you can't wait, you know, so like the video. Thank you so much guys for watching. Honestly, I really do appreciate it for supporting me and all that. So thank you guys. And I will see you in the next video where we're actually going to start off strong. We're going to be doing passport JS authentication with Google. So thanks guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.